Hi everyone, ever wondered if you've been sharpening your photos the wrong way? In this video, I'll share a powerful editing workflow to help you create the sharpest images possible, along with essential sharpening tips every photographer needs to know. And stick around, I'll also reveal why I don't use Lightroom to export my images for the web. There is a better way. Firstly, what exactly is sharpening? Everyone applies it to the images, but not a lot of people understand exactly what sharpening does. So I've got this simple demonstration here. I've got a gray box inside a dark gray box, and I want to show you exactly what sharpening actually does. For those who don't know, sharpening is creating contrast along edges. So you can see this edge between the dark gray and the light gray. So I'm going to adjust the amount to 150 here, just so you can see what's happening along that edge. Now I'm zoomed in at 800%, let's go to 1600%, just so you can see a little bit better what, what it's doing here. So my amount is at 150, and you can see Lightroom is creating contrast along those edges. So on the darker side, you can see this line that is dark, and on the other side of the edge, it's becoming brighter. So you can see it's adding contrast to that edge. If we increase radius from 0.5, you'll see the sharpening extend out from that edge by the value that you have chosen there. So 3.0 is three pixels on either side of that edge. So you can see it's created an extension of that contrast. Now, if you go back to 0.5, it's a shorter distance from that edge where contrast is added. What detail is going to do, is going to create extra contrast along that edge. So you can see a value of 100 has extended that contrast out. So what detail is going to do is going to create the appearance of more detail just by adding in more contrast there. And then masking, if you hold down Alt, it's going to get rid of sharpening in an area where there is no detail. So I'm holding down Alt, dragging up the masking. You can see it's only really going to sharpen that area there. It's also worth noting, the bigger the contrast is at the edge, the more pronounced the sharpening effect is going to be. So if you've got an area of very low contrast between areas on, along an edge, that sharpening effect will be a lot less than areas of a higher contrast. So let's look at a workflow for perfecting the sharpness in your images. I break sharpening down into three categories, raw details, master sharpening and output sharpening. So to start with, I've got this leopard image here. I've got no editing applied to this image. Now the first step before I do anything is I like to clean up the raw file. So what that means is getting rid of the noise and then cleaning up or sharpening more detail on the raw level. So to do that, I use DxO Pure Raw 4. It's a plugin for Lightroom that you can use to adjust the raw data. I've got a tutorial on my channel going in depth in the software, but if you wanna check it out, so there are links in the description. So in DxO, I like to clean up the file. As you can see, I've got some noise reduction here. On the side, you can notice the noise disappearing really nicely there. And then I'm also going to sharpen up the raw detail here just by using the lens softness compensation. So I'm probably going to use standard here, and then I'm going to get rid of chromatic aberration, and then process the file back into Lightroom. That's going to create a DNG file for me to work on, including all the raw data that I got out of the original Nikon raw file. If you don't want to use a third party plugin, Lightroom's ARD noise is really, really good. So I'll show you that quickly here. I'm just going to go back to my original raw file, click denoise, and let's just go to an area that is out of focus. Let's look along that edge there. I think this is quite high at 75, so maybe let's put it at 35. Let's hit enhance. Now that is going to also create a new DNG file similar to what DxO does. The reason why I use DxO is because it does a lot of nice sharpening to the image as well. And I just find the results from DxO to be a little bit better than from what Lightroom AI denoise gives us. This is the file that DxO has given me, the DNG file. If you zoom in, the background is nice and clean and the details have been sharpened. Just make sure to check your detail before you start editing as Lightroom has applied sharpening by default. I like to start out with that at zero and then go through the edit. Now I'm not going to show you the edits on this image. I'm just going to apply presets to do the editing for me. And then the next step I want to do is master file sharpening. So I'm going to use the detail panel here in Lightroom. I'm going to add some sharpening. Now I'm viewing this at 100%. And I'm going to add my amount probably to about 60 or so. Definitely want to take the radius down. I prefer a much finer sharpening. If you take the radius up, you can see it's getting very apparent that you're adding sharpening. So I'm going to drop that down to 0.5. I use 0.5 on every image. 
Detail, I don't like to increase detail too much. You can if the image is a bit soft, but I generally maybe keep that at about 10. And then important here, you don't want to add any sharpening to the out of focus areas. You only want to add sharpening to the detail in the image. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to drag this masking here and a value probably of about 20 or so, 25 does the trick. So now I want you to notice something here. I've got this masking set to 25. If I go back to the original raw file here, and I do the same thing. Let's just add this preset so the image looks the same. If I go to masking of 20, 25, you can see there's still detail in the background, which is actually the noise. So by removing the noise in your image, you're able to use a lower masking amount, which is going to help sharpen more of the image. Now, if I had to use masking on this image here without cleaning up the noise, I would probably have to go to about 50, maybe 55, and you can see there's less of the image being sharpened. I'm potentially removing sharpening from areas that should be sharpened. But now with a denoised file, just at 25, I'm not sharpening any of that out of focus area in the background there. So that's a massive advantage for sharpening on a cleaner file. So let's just compare the AI denoise to DXO. And you can see on the left hand side is the Lightroom denoise. And on the right hand side is the DxO denoise. So you can see there's a lot more detail that's been captured through the DxO software as opposed to what Lightroom has done. Lightroom has taken away the noise really well and it's pretty much the same as the DxO one, but the sharpening on DxO Pure 4 is far superior in my opinion. Now, once I have set my sharpening on my master file, now I want to export this for the web. Now, let me explain why I don't use Lightroom to sharpen images for web. When you sharpen your image, Using the export dialog in Lightroom, you've got a sharpening setting here, output sharpening, but there's no option there to sharpen specific areas. Now, if you use this output sharpening, it's going to sharpen the image quite well, but it's also going to add sharpening to the out of focus areas. Now, if you really want to get critical sharpness and, and image quality for web, I highly advise you to not use Lightroom to do that. What I'm going to do is going to move this file into Photoshop and I'm going to sharpen rather using a set of actions that I've created. Now this is going to easily apply a custom sharpening technique that I've developed. So let me run through one of these for example. These actions are available on my website. There's a link in the description below. Now let's say we want to export, let's just say at 1080 pixels on the long edge. I'm going to hit play. That's going to duplicate the file and it's going to add my sharpening action to it. So you can see I've got this layer stack here. Let's just turn these off to show you what's happening. The bottom layer is clean, that's an unsharpened. And then I've got a group here, which is going to sharpen the image. I've got two layers, one layer sharpen, one is sharpen extra. And then important to see here is I've got a layer mask. Now that is applying a mask using the subject selection on the image. Now what that's going to do is going to allow the action or the sharpening to only be applied to my subject and not to anything that is out of focus or not part of that subject. Now obviously Photoshop may struggle to detect what the subject is, but largely it does a good job. But what you can then do if you want to further tweak the subject selection is you can click this mask and with a black or white brush you can add or subtract areas from the image that you don't want to be sharpened using black or with a white brush, add in areas that you want to be sharpened. So if I just hit Alt here and click that mask, you can see everything that's white is going to be sharpened. Everything that's black is not going to be sharpened. Now we don't want to sharpen the out of focus area, the back of this leopard here. We don't want to sharpen this foreground area and maybe the top of the head we don't really want to sharpen. We just want to sharpen those details there. Now what Photoshop allows us to do, it allows us to add or remove the sharpening effects just by adjusting the opacity on a layer. You can also remove the sharpening applied by this sharpen extra layer, but I'm just going to go to the master folder here for the sharpening and just decrease the opacity to zero and then slowly bring in the sharpening effect somewhere that you feel is a nice amount.
Now I've created this action set to over sharpen the image to allow you to bring that opacity down to fine tune the sharpening. I don't want to create a sharpening action set that doesn't sharpen enough. So I've overdone it a little bit and you can then just customize these layers and the opacity to then fine tune the sharpening on your image. Once we are done there, just going to go file, export, save for web, and then you can save the image as a JPEG, wherever you want. Sharpening is a critical step in photo editing that's worth perfecting. Equally important is achieving the right contrast in your images. In this video, I'll share powerful techniques to enhance contrast on your wildlife images in Lightroom.